Right. For old Lang Syne, eh? And for the future. Well, hello, I guess, Ki Admira Fetch. Hello, and a hundred thousand welcomes. It's Mishaheen Parig McNeil. I'm Parig McNeil, tradition bearer, Gaelic bard, and bard in all of Scotland's different languages. Because I love the culture and the language and the way of thinking, the paradigm of this ancient nation which has given so much to humanity. And nowhere is that more exemplified than in traditional verse composed by the bards of old from time immemorial. And here today we are at the fulcrum of the very place that could have changed the history of Scotland and the world forever. Sleeve and Chirim, Sheriff Muir, on the hills above Dunblain. And I'm looking here at the mountain of Demiat, which sees the soles of my feet every week as, as we still run up the hills. Just like a culture of the Fianna, the Fianna, Finn McCool's men of ancient times. But behind me here is Carnan Rahach, the monument to the Macraes. The Macraes, the valiant clan who stood on the front left of the Jacobite army of 1715. And because there was insufficient cavalry support, they took a serious amount of casualties. But they would never retreat, because that was not in their creed. Twelve times they reformed and twelve times they came back. And was it not General Whitman, who was on the side of the English, who admired them for their courage, saying, he never saw such a fine line of men standing in perfect unison. And he lamented the fact that they had so many casualties. <clears throat> but the poetry of Sheriff Muir will make sure that this event, like many events in Scotland, will never be forgotten. Oh, we build monuments. We have tour guides. We have all sorts of wonderful things in which, ways in which people can view the history of the country. But what better than from the breath and from the mouth of the bards who were eyewitnesses who lived there at the time. In 1715, there lived in the island of Egg a man called John MacDonald. He was one of the great, great Clan Ronald race. He was known as Ian Du, Mach Ian, Vik Elain. That's Ian, son of black-haired Ian, son of Alan. And they couldn't use their second names because they got the postman very confused since everybody had the same second name. He was what they called a vernacular bard and he composed many a verse at that particular time, but he was an innovator. See, Highlanders were never stuck in a lay-by. They were always willing to innovate, like the great McCrimmon Pipers, who took pipe music to its zenith under the sponsorship, the patronage of Charles II. And so it was with Ian Du. Normally, the Gaelic poems that were composed by the clan bards were in praise of their race, of their chiefs, of the valiance of their men, of the, hist the history of their battles to help them to stand strong in the face of the strife. But Ian Du was to introduce a new convention into Highland poetry. It was called Allies. Whereby, as you'll hear in part of this song, all the clans of the North were invited to stand together in common cause. Even ancient enemies, such as the Campbells and the Macdonalds, in the same muster roll. And if that was not enough, the nobles of the lowlands were to come and join the cause. And no gale up to this point had ventured to put such a piece together. This is what we called a brausnahag, or an incitement to war. This was a national call to arms. And the way he constructed this wasn't like the old Gaelic strophic metre, which I'll give a few examples of in a minute. This was a new type of convention called Aharan or Auran, but it was symmetrical metre, whereby the assonances, the vowels, would resound out like, the, like an iambic heartbeat. So when the warriors would strike upon their shields, 
they would hear it and it would stir them up, uh, being reminded of the heroic deeds of their ancestors. Well, this particular poem opens out with an ancient prophecy. And the prophecy stems back to the days of the great and the one and only William Wallace. There lived a man called True Thomas or Thomas the Rhymer. And according to the oral tradition, he was taken into the land of the she Yakin, the fairy folk, or the queen of the fairy land. And he was in there for seven years and a day. And he was given a gift of two things, a tongue that would never lie and an eye that would see into the future. And he foresaw and he foretold of many things that was going to happen in Scotland's future. He saw the day when a French queen would rule Scotland, who would become the Queen of France as well, our beloved Queen Mary, one of the greatest monarchs we ever had. How tragic her end. One day her son would be the king of a united Britain. And of course that was James VI. But he also foresaw the day the one that would be a great battle had in a Chloe, north of the Clyde. And the gales would arise from their glens. And Highland culture would have parity, equity with that of the rest of the world being recognised as a cultural entity. This was Gaelic nationalism and indeed Scottish nationalism. I don't believe all this lies of history who tell us that the Jacobite cause wasn't nationalist. Was it not in King James's proclamation in October of 1715? He said in his proclamation, quote, to restore the kingdom to its most ancient liberation and independence. That's what King James said. Oh, it wasn't Scots versus English on Sheriff Muir. It was nationalist versus unionist. That was the battle. So the, the, the song opens out with this ancient prophecy of Thomas's and it translates, this is the time of the prophecy to be fulfilled when every noble will arise from their glen and wild fierce anger in the service of the crown. And the second verse, on that account every prancing horse shall shout for joy. On that account the English shall be destroyed and the French our companions shall be at our back. Then he begins to enumerate all the different clans. It's a long song, so I'm just going to give you a few verses. If the MacDonalds should arise, of course the MacDonalds always have to go first. The MacDonalds should arise. Those fierce thunderbolts, those stout lions, whose ancient right it was to use the red hand. My Lord, it would be folly for them to fall upon you. I'll give you a, a few verses of the song. It's called Aur and Nanfinic and Gaelach. This convention was to be repeated by another clan, Ronald Bard, and 30 years later, Alistair MacVeister, Alistair, Alexander MacDonald, Poet Laureate to Bonnie Prince Charlie, who also composed an Allies poem, but it was the invention of Ian Du MacDonald of, Isle, of, of Egg. Here it goes. She shone me, she ran Jerava, ran Tadaganakain, Brass Mena, Manak Fidelava, Pahunaram of Virtus. Nur ye riskak tre, nur na he joglanur, verun ferek ages gerek, kushere vishakrun. Hich ma hiv na gal takli hound of sakush, gurlion verek shengavar, gowns is li sound. Bisa senika hir chigun tain gav gachun, bin a frank ik non kaumpi, gre hound er cool the McDonald's. Nur a year is clumped on, no leo and hackerack. Now behold, they heard for all the hun cars, but not get up. Look, he's of not caught a can or still life, you duck. Mohokoi, Gumbagod of Gaivatosh, you get up. The McLeods. The leo, the compar, grand cabal, the curshio. Dream ring, or can let this and gorge it and skia. Gurniers for Oak Yell, the Kura, Grihurt, Lia, Gurun Krua, Dollar Dua, the Casaguas, Gregoria, the Maclean's, Clungine, and Andrel, Lun Hit Sound, the Sunrake, Drumachio, Sikun Ein, Jerskun Tang, Hush and Boy, 
Drei Mrigo Tokio, sich nach Strio, Kedon Tloa, Simak Mirak, Jesjirak, Vedin, Ching of Suez, the Camerons. Gurleon, Verlev, Helm, Hek, Ew, and Lochiel, Fir Kolag, and the Varag, and the Sayak, and the Griav. Id Merkola, Ve Merkola, Ve Serkhan, Akrohion, Shimogul, Samrus, Kagnak Jul, Tidov Shias, the Mathesons. Clonic van and gear won hitch train the cold alarm, and the law person yed in pure base of Igarak. And now, Dolavua, the Bin Croa, the Lord Kalak, Bukun, you could be men, nor the yed could ferrek. Nambi of Gact, in a dish, yed is a noun, in a noon in Chinji, the Kunya, the Gunkhaun. At Kokin Chakri in a city of her gal, Ganjan Mushak Nandu Gal, he coosh her in Kaun. And the last verse says, In common cause we shall stand together, and our blades will be over the heads of the strangers. Might sound like a bloody song, but there is nothing romantic about war. But certainly these people lived there at the time and they should know. And of course war bears its tragedy as well, and the Gael, the Highlanders, celebrated everything in verse. Birth, death was commemorated, battles were extolled, ancient bloodlines were praised, everything. There were songs for rowing, songs for working, songs for spinning, songs for weaving the cloth. And it was all poetry, and all poetry was sung. But by the same bard, I thought I might give you another one before I move on to Sheilas MacDonnell, the great bard of Kepoch. She was a fantastic bard. And she was one of the great bards of the 15 as well. Sheilas Nekichbich, as they called her. Uh, a fierce, fierce Jacobite, a fierce nationalist. At the battlefield of Sheriff Muir in 1715, Alan MacDonald, the 14th of Clan Ronald, was to die of his wounds. See, the Gael, the Highlander, celebrate, commemorated everything in verse so that those verses could be handed on to their progeny, to their children and their grandchildren, lest they forget. It was the great Callum MacLean, the folklorist, brother of the late and great Sordy MacLean, who said, quote, The written history will tell us what is politic for us to hear, but that which is handed down by word of mouth will tell us the full story. Well, at the battlefield of Sheriff Muir in 1715, Alan MacDonald, the 14th of Clan Ronald, died of his wounds. Now, the history books tell us it was from the, the bullets or the, or the shot of the English battalions facing them, Kingston's Horse Regiment, Lord Montague's, Morrison's, and all those, those who were facing them. The, they were on the right wing. This was the left wing of the English army. Well, the history books tell us otherwise. Apparently there was a curse put upon his family uh, by an old spay wife. Uh, it's a long, it's a, that's a long story in itself. But nevertheless, Alan MacDonald was a real gentleman. Everybody in the Highlands who knew him loved him. He was kind to the poor, he was given to hospitality, and he was fierce in battle. So much so, he had been badly wounded, almost nigh unto death, in the Pyrenees Mountains, previous to the 1715 Rising. So much so, that he was so badly wounded that he could no longer have children. But anyway, he died of his wounds here at Sheriff Muir, and the bard, Ian Du, commemorates that in this lament, this ancient keening song for the dead. Uh, the first verse translates, in the, in the year that our enemies sprung upon us, the 1,715 years that have sped, we have lost the fragrant rose of our kindred, and the sting of it will be with us forever. Or you, O princely lord of the Ronalds, who the Lord God chose to be our guide, now lying in their inner periphery of the shroud boards. And the bard goes on to extol his virtues in hunting, in hospitality, and the one in braveness in battle who would not turn in the face of the enemy. And in the last verse is a prayer to God, where it says, O you who took Moses out of Egypt, and embed the souls of the three in the fire, O King of Kings, do not let oppression come upon us. King of Kings, do not let oppression come upon us. So this is a lament for the dead in the form of a, a beseechment, if you like. It's an incantation, it's an invocation. 
and this, this laments the passing of Alan MacDonald, the great chief of Clan Ronald. The song is called Mararan de Vachki Kalain, Clan Ronald's Lament. <coughs> Lian ale ma gad mi la gan koig jig sa mi de la sna sha ke da rai ni mach chail chen u ro sir ki ne hest Skid ale sir ar ki ne rem be ho Skid ale sir ar ki ne rem be ho your <laughs> Va mi yuvel do spirit of war. Va u chau mount skak for the gris bitu ski per na fareki. Lira kasa chingala vak nura yirigan gara vorst. Stugun ji bragan tanavar mu aborst. Stugun ji bragan tanavar mu aborst. Sound of shoe, well, I got out of the expert to Ganchalak it as to lie before me raps, it a niag but in Kalak it. Sturain goo, I guess Talavin Murahon. Sturain goo, I guess Talavin Murahon. Seldom carried to heal a spin gun higher at ye. Jesus scared a gochit girl, Viki Kellen and ye coo. Ere a len a ganyish marbacor. Ere a len a ganyish marbacor. Gains knock you, I can go out a gun rake, a hookshin can go out, a cabavoa knock a cow, gain, nishmar colon can countion. Or I in row the stow to go and follow. Or I in row the stow to go and follow. A kirk me shouts an effet to sculpt you for Naklarega, who can trio as an akin, can win garrigan crakan. Reen and reen are the cake of the car. Reen and reen are the cake of the car. And then the second last verse of that piece, Lament to Clan Ronald, it mentions a hero who was called Rul Makelianoig, Ronald, son of young Alan. He was Ronald MacDonald of Morar. He was a taxman, a Don Yuasal, who, who had studied the art of combating batting the evil one. And he was the one who uh, took the confession of Alan Jerrig's last, his father before he died, who had given himself to evil and he'd accepted his confession. But Alan, of course, was just the exact opposite, a total gentleman, but he died of his wounds because of the curse that was put upon the family. But in that second last verse, Ranald, who was a mighty man with a two-handed sword, had been killed by a dun-coloured bull the previous summer, and that's why he couldn't join them at the rising. But after the bull gored him, he lay there dying, and he composed a pibrhoch for the bull that had killed him, and it was called an taravoer. Such was the sense of humour and honour of the Highlanders, that even on their deathbed they would honour a bull. Was it not himself that composed an taravjerak, which is now in the Moidert collection, uh, which my good friend Alan MacDonald, the piper, uh, collected many of them. But you see, poetry and song was one of the ways in which information was handed down. The other way, of course, was storytelling. And to be a bard, you had to know a good number of tales from memory. This was utterly essential, because every piece of verse that you composed was ingratiated in your culture. There was nothing modern about it. There was an ancient line from, from these poems and verses, even just the way that the, the vowels were put together, they would go back to a line way back to the kings of old, like Con of the Hundred Battles, and, and even young, long before that, to very ancient times. The way that these poems were constructed, they were constructed in such a way, the Greeks called it, it's a Greek word, iambic. It just means a heartbeat, bum bum, 
boom, 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 boom. Even if you think of Robert Burns, when Chap and Billy's leave the street and Druthy neighbours, neighbours meet, that's iambic. Sometimes you get the triple foot or the quadruple foot, but the Gales tended to use iambic. That last song that I sung, Lament to Clan Ronald, Maradon de Vachki Kellein, was in a type of metre called strophic metre, which just simply means it can be three or four lines, but in the last line there's an extra syllable. That's all it means. And quite often they're either repeated or the last line's repeated. For example, in Lament to Rob Roy, the first line is, Rhein me su ega harn, gab me mool at nach gown, mun scale hana nau an rehecho. Second verse, Gro gash gach mo gul, na vai ira hiv, smo chrech len an chik, vim fara chost. See that? They've got the extra syllable. That's what they call strophic metre. But iambic was very, very important. And the first song that I sung there, the song of the Highland clans, was very much like that. That one was actually triple footed. See Sean Emesher and Jennifer. So it's got that bum bum, bum bum, the heartbeat all the way through it. So the rhythm's actually built actually into it. It's actually in, in, in the song itself. Um, I think since we're at Sheriff Muir, it would be important now to talk a wee bit about Sheilas. Sheilas MacDonnell of Kepoch. She was um, an amazing bardess. She was a daughter of my of Mach uh, MacDonnell of Kepoch of the 15, the famous Colin and Ball. He was a famous Highland chief and a very fierce one too and a Jacobite. She composed many, many pieces. And this is actually a lullaby for her children. And this was a piece that she composed in the lead up to the 1715 Rising as a kind of <coughs> anticipation of the Rising going to take place. But the refrain of the song is a kind of, it's a kind of talu, it's a talu, what they call a, a lullaby, if you like, for her children. It's a haminam chatel snachdosh kakmi. I am asleep, do not awaken me. In other words, do not awaken me until the rightful king is upon the throne. And this song is also quite graphic, as a lot of these songs are. <coughs> it talks at Grimberg, it talks about how that many of the nobles were scattered after the Jacobite rising of 1689. And she's lamenting that and calling them back to the cause. And there's many a woman lamenting for her husband who is missing. Then she talks about um, how that their, their bloods will, their Shield, the, the sheaths of their swords will taste blood, their blades will taste blood. And, and of course it talks about, um, she refers to King George as the king of the pigs, that twig, King George. And she looks forward to the time when his neck will be in a noose. That was the way it was. At that particular time, these songs would have been regarded as treasonous, but the Highlanders were alone to their own right and nobody was going to tell them what to do. They were a sovereign people. So I'll give you this song anyway, Haminam Hatol by Sheila MacDonnell. Good mag me a mars, good gag fiend ye er folk rig. Haminam Hatol, snaradush gag me. Gunna hear good nevnats. Gun reach a go your Aminam khato snaradush kakmi. Gurimag ben nuasal anachahik nyak na shamar. Gunahir kanyevnes. She gave in a honor. A sheer coin, a no ashland, a hoard he had reforced. A minam hato snatush could me. Morway a clown, a gown, none could is cheer. Aminam kato, snadush could me. Mokruskin a noun, a noun, none 